Father, God bless you so much. God bless you. God bless you. That was, that was a good and nice ministration. Um, I feel so bad that I wasn't part of the opening prayer. But when I came to meet, I, I like the way our sister went with us. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That has been our focus of discussion for, for throughout this week. I began with this on Monday, and I want to continue and finish it. Because God wants us to come to a point where we become so assured in him that indeed he is our strong tower. His name gives us everything in him that we need. And that we need in terms of protection. And that we need in terms of provision. What is in his name? And what comes out of his name? Is something that anyone that runs to him is able to find fulfillment. So when you are walking around, you know that there is a rock that you rely on. You know that when you are sick, he is a healer. You know that when you are in trouble, he is the one that delivers. You know that when there is no one to turn to, he is always with you. And you can turn to him. And all these are in his name that you can hold on to and be content. So, our test has been Proverbs 18, verse 10. Monday, we added the verse 11, and you understand as I try to go back. So, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and I say, the Amplified will say that. The righteous runs to it, and is safe, and set on high far above evil far above evil so we, re- we said that there is no full assurance in anything but in our God even in his name remember that I explained that a name stands in for the person so when we're talking about God and we talk about God as his name whatever you know about God comes to mind so, the, 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 the person can be taken out and the name can be there. And so, the name will be functioning like the person. You know, those of you who are at the bank, there are some people who don't come to the banking hall, but they bank more than those of us who go and queue. Oh, you haven't realized that. They don't go to the banking hall. But they bank more than us. They can wait uh, till it is about 5 o'clock. Then they will throw a call to somebody they call relationship manager. And then, hello, I am Apostle Eric Nyamiche. Let me use that one for instance. Or if you, you let me use, no, let me go that way. That one is safe. I am Apostle Eric Nyamiche. Then, he's not in the banking hall. But the person will sit up from his desk. Oh, sir, can I help you? Uh, okay, can I give it to the manager? In fact, he doesn't even think that he's the right person to talk to you on the phone. Then he will run and give it to the manager. Apostle Nyamiche wants to talk to you. Then he will take it. Oh, Apostle, is anything the matter? Uh, I hope you have him close. But he knows it is five o'clock. <laughs> oh, 
oh, oh, oh, no, sir, yes, sir. He's also confused because actually they have clothes, but they have been clothes for some people. And this one, the person is not there, but by mentioning of the name. So the name stands for the person. In fact, when you mention the name, it tells the totality of the person, sometimes even beyond. So when we are saying that the name of the Lord is a song tower, what we are saying is that in that God, in that God, in that Lord Jesus is a song tower. And when we run into who he is, we are safe. We are safe. And nothing is able to do that for us more than our God. Not even in riches. No. No. It gets to a point that you realize that riches cannot be dependent on. Because they will have limitation. So the verse 11 will say that the rich think of their world as a strong defense. They only think about it. And they imagine it because it's not a reality. It's not real. It doesn't happen. When it gets to the last point of it, you realize that no, that cannot solve it. There was a case in the Bible that the people will tell source people that as for this matter, money cannot settle it. As for this matter, it can't. It can't. So they will build their wealth as high so that they will think that it becomes a high wall of safety. So they will build it higher. But the issue is that the challenges of this life they are so, so stubborn that they will clamp over the high riches built and still come in there. If they cannot clamp, they will make a hole, a tunnel beneath it, and will still come to you. So they come. But where you can have total confidence and total assurance, where you can indeed have safety, is in the name of the Lord. We realize that it provides two main things. But out of those two, it's all that we need. You know, the tower is a place of safe refuge. And why? Because they are strongly built, heavily fortified. They are solidly, securely built. And once securely built you can have protection in it nothing can penetrate through it no nothing then number two two, they were places that they will keep supplies so they will keep food they will keep all that you will need so that when you get inside you don't need to come out everything is provided in there I pray that may the Lord give you this assurance that as long as you are in him, every provision, supply is available because they are kept there. So some towers were built to hold large amount of food and supplies. It was a place of safety and a place of supply. It is a place of protection and provision. So when they are in want, the whole city can run into it. And they are safe. And they are safe. So we dealt with that first part. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Now, the righteous run to it and are safe. The righteous. That is why I want to focus on so much. But why the righteous? Have you considered? Why is it the righteous? So it means that not everyone can run to it then number two even if everyone runs to it it's not everyone that will be safe in it I hope you are getting the, what I'm going so it is the righteous that will run to it and are safe but why the righteous because they have faith in him 
they have faith in God. They know who their God is. So, the Bible will say that. And those that know their God, they shall do. They know their God. They know what is in him. So when they are going, they know what they are going for. So as soon as they get there, they will surely be safe. They will. Number two, they are free from every load. And so are able to run to the Lord. They have nothing to carry. If you want to run, you must be loose. If you want to run, look at those who run professionally. Because they want to be light. So they can run as they want. Or as they ought to be. So those who can run to that tower, they have no heaviness. They have nothing that keeps them aback. They have nothing that they are carrying on. Even not their successes. Because they know that their successes come from God. Their goodness that they see it comes from God so they don't carry them when they are going because they know that it is out of that tower that they receive all so why do I carry to that tower even the good things even the good things it looks it just like those days when we were young we used to visit our old lady at the village when we are on vacation and when you are going your, your mom will buy certain things for you to go along. Those things that they will buy will include the Kobe, the Opa, Opa Momone. <laughs> they will also buy a drink. Uh, a drink. And then you are going. But you know, when you are going, they will not make you carry plenty and cassava to that village. Because they know that at that place there are plenty of that don't come to the Lord to boast about your riches because it is in him that you have all and it is in him that you have the plenty that you think you have so you go there not carrying anything not carrying your sins not carrying anything no 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 no. but you go there with only your burden you want to meet that God that provides that protests and once you run in there you are safe. That is why it requires the righteous. It is on them that his name is placed. It's on the righteous that the name of God is placed. You know, in Psalm 23, verse 3, God, the, the writer will say that he orders my step in the path of righteousness. And then he will continue for his name seek. Now, <laughs> that is why you need to live a righteous life. The Lord's name is on you. In that name is righteousness. So when people hear that name, he wants to see that component of righteousness. So God in his own way, in guiding his name, will sometimes and most times order you in that way so that Nidino and say so it is on you that his name is and he's conscious of that so when you run in you will surely be saved the last two points they have covenant with him and he also has promises for them once you come to God and you are one of his own you are covenanted with him and he has promises for you and so when you get to him it is about what you have promised give unto me and he provides them because it is required of him to do that so the righteous runs because they have faith in him they are free from every load it is on them that his name is please they have covenant with him and he also has promises with them so believers have been made righteous by Christ's sacrificial death 
and we run to him not only for salvation that one we have gotten it but also for provisions and supply protections for supplies and safety we run we run now the righteous run why the running why they don't just walk in why because they need their resource in haste you want it fast sweetly the, the, the burden on you is so huge that you can't wait no you can't you need it in haste there is so much burden on you oh god this sickness must go and so you run to him there is no time to waste you need something so urgent i came to tell you that if you need something so urgent nowhere can you run to but the tower because the tower is able to provide and able to provide at any point in time they run means that they go out of themselves they retire from the world they know that in themselves and the world there is nothing that can give us what we want what we deserve what we ought to go to get so they will run because behind us is nothing that can fulfill what you are looking for so they run Mm, no other grounds is singing. Oh, no other grounds is singing. Oh, nothing else but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. The sweetest frame, but holy lean on oh, Jesus. Oh, on Christ the soul, in Christ the Oh, Adam. from all things around them even themselves and they are coming to you i want someone who is deserving so much and we say that i am coming lord i am coming i am coming and i am coming in haste i am coming speedily because it is in you that i can get that they draw in god and god in them but more importantly they are running because they want to avail themselves to their source of supplies and protection so they don't have time to to make preparation they are just running you know when you want to prepare you will slow down but they don't have any time to slow down in this what they are saying is that we are up to you and we are coming to you and that there is nothing that we can prepare that can prepare us better than coming to you yourself for in you that we live and have our being they don't have time for legal arguments they run at once so they are not thinking about okay so this one does it sound well is it according to the law of contract or the law of this no they don't have time for that is this about the constitution you know the constitution said sha this one uh, sha and world what is the difference you know this one is this and this one is that they don't have time for that all they know is that in my lord there is so much i don't need to understand sometimes i don't need to apprehend because what he does by his name they are beyond what you can think of so the elders will ask them by what name or by what power 
have you been able to bring this man to his feet? Then they will tell them, me dear, I don't know. If I like the way that crippled man will say, me, I don't know. I was down. But all I know now is that I am walking. I don't know the biology behind it. I don't know where there is some psychology behind it. But what I see, what I have come to realize is that I used to be that. But I am no more like that. Why? Because there is a name that was mentioned. And that name has brought that change. No, no argument. No argument. Legal one or whatsoever. No argument. So we are running. And what has happened to is that fear quickens that. Anytime you are running, there is some fear. You don't want things to catch up on you. There is some holy fear that pushes us to God. And I pray that anytime we get to that point, we will turn to God and God alone. And then you are running because it is with great eagerness. With great eagerness. I can wait many more. I am eager for you. I am so eager for you. So, the people of old will say, Una many a gina woo. Ungo to na me. Because they know that it is only God that they desire. And they are so eager for God. That when they are coming to church, oh na many a gina woo. And as they do that, they are running to God. So when they come to church, it is not then that they are going to be heated up. No, it is not then. You know, when our fathers tell us that as a thing that we do is that you pray before you even come to church, they know what they are saying because they want you to start running. So that when you get to the church, you are already running. You are already desiring that God. Your heart and your soul is panting for that God. That, that water in the Lord that will quench your thirst. And so when you come, you begin to receive. I pray that you will always be in eagerness towards God. And out of that, you will run to him. And as you run to him, may he be the source of your provision. And even of protection. How do they run? By prayer and devotion. When you read the Ephesians account, talking about the armor, you will not talk about prayer. But then, after 10, you'll be mentioning prayer about three times. And you'll be telling you that combine all these things with prayer and supplication. Let's go there. Oh, I don't know if my people can help me. Let's switch from the slide to good. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his power, mighty power. Let's continue. 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Let's continue. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. La, 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 la. Let's continue. 13. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, 14. Stand firm then. The belt, then he will mention them. Let's go 15. So he'll be mentioning the, the armor, 15, um, 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which will which can you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one 17 so he has mentioned all the tools now 18 and pray in the spirits on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints that one verse, three times prayer. But he will start from the 10 and talk about all that we call the armors. It tells you that you can put all those armor, but what will keep you running to the source is prayer. On all occasions, 
with all kinds of prayer. All kinds. Sometimes you do some prayer that you yourself you can't even understand. But there are also all kinds of prayer. May that be your desire. That indeed you will run to God through prayer and devotion towards Him. Through the exercise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. You exercise it. You exercise it. So you know God has blessed you with this gift. As soon as you need something from him, you exercise it. If it is faith, if it is gift of healings, if it is working of miracles, you exercise it. And as you exercise them, you get what you need. So when we meet and we don't hear the spirit's gifts being exercised, it, it limits us. It deprives us of so much. I pray that there shall be prophecies among us. I pray that there shall be, there shall be, there shall be healings among us. Working of miracles. We will see descending of spirit at display. Word of knowledge shall be known as we meet, as we encounter ourselves. Word of knowledge. Oh, word of wisdom. May God grant that unto his church. Because it is out of such when we exercise them. We run to the strong tower and we are saved. Then, by exercising the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 23. Galatians 5. Now I know my people can switch between my slides and the Bible quotations well, so I'll be relying on that. From 22, we'll be mentioning the gift, the fruits. Of the spirit, and then he will be closing that gentleness and self control, they are part. Then he will say that against such things, there is no law. You find yourself in all those troubles because you don't exhibit these things. If you exhibit these things, you won't find yourself in some troubles, you won't get into it. At the workplace, you won't. If you are exercising those fruits, you won't. Because once you are within that border, no law can be raised against you and stand. Because you have moved beyond what the natural law talks about. I hope you are getting it. So most of the time we get ourselves into trouble. The police is on us because we have not exhibited some, something in here. Oh yeah oh yeah but once you are exercising the fruit you are exercising the gift you are in prayer you can run to that god you can run to him and you will be saved let me rush to the resource when you do that i've already said that you have provision and protection so within that safe is pro- pro- provision and protection when you go to that office and that safe box is there there is provision <laughs> or oh, you don't think so <laughs> there is cash there is cash in there so when you go to a place that they say they are running cashless office like COP and then you go and see a safe now I'm, 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 con- I'm contemplating are we really running cashless office <laughs> it, it can be but anytime you see the safe there there are some supplies in there but also there will be some protection in there. So as for that one, and it is safe from the devil. The devil can't come near you because Christ has broken his head. It is safety for life because our life is hid with Christ in God. It is safety from death. I am mentioning things that a real now. And then we hear now things that seem to be trash to you. None of them that the name cannot provide safety and provision for you against. None of them. It is about death that you will die. Paul will say that even now I don't know whether I should die or I should live. Because whether I die or live, I live for him. And then he will say, sometimes I even think that when I die, it's more prosperous for me. 
But man, what can you do? I'm a dream. So, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Is it about sin or the law? No, we are above the law. For sin, we have moved out of that domain because Christ died for us. So, in Him, you are safe. Safe from everything that seems like a threat to you. Not only that you are safe, but you are also set on high, far above evil. Set on high. Set on high. So you can look down upon every trial, upon every temptation, upon every adversary, adversary. Upon every malicious attack, you are high there. You look at it and then watch you know, because you don't care what they are about to do. You don't care. It's just like an eagle who is very, very high on the tall tree. And then he sees that hunter who is clocking his gun. Gun no clock no one by no no when the eagle sees it, because he knows that at the height he is, your gun cannot reach there. Your gun can't get there. Your gun cannot, it can't, it can't. Because I am so highly lifted that you can try, you try. You'll be wasting your ambition. You'll be wasting your bullets. You'll be wasting your effort. That is what God has made us. He set us on high, far above evil. Second Corinthians says something, and I, I am so happy about that. Let me first talk about the Psalm 23. He will say that, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and look at the verse 5 thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies they are there but they can't touch me i am lifted high so they can't touch me it's so enjoying that your enemies are living and you are living very enjoying so sometimes when you are praying to kill them I think that your level hasn't gotten to a certain level. You want to kill them because you think they can kill you. But if you know that whatever they can do, they can kill you. You want them to live so that they will see what God will make out of you and come and say that of a truth, you have a God. Stop making that prayers because that one is a lower level of request. A lower level. Let them live and see you. Let them live and see you. Second Corinthians 6, we say this. From the verse 1 and 2, I'm ending. But I want you to know that God has placed us at a certain level that we shouldn't come down. So the verse 1 and 2, we say that. Companions, as we are in this work with you, we beg you, please, don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given us. It's just like saying that we have given you some good. They are so cherishable. So don't squander it by heart by heart. Okay, don't misuse it in any how. Then he will explain that God reminds us, I heard your call in the neck of time. This one is the message Bible. The day you needed me, I was there to help. So God will tell you, why you don't need to squander the chances I'm giving you and the privilege, the gift I've given unto you, this 